Funding for this program is provided by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of the complete line of Cajun King seafood seasoning mixes and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Ah, Louisiana. Hello, I'm Chef John Foles, welcoming you to this great state of ours. We're real proud of our people, places, and food, and I'd like for you to know a little bit more about it. So join me and some of my friends as we visit the historical food towns of this state and cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Everybody and welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. Thank you for stopping by as we search out the great historical food towns of Louisiana. Today we're going to central Louisiana in and around the parish of Rapids. The fact is we're going to Alexandria, Louisiana, one of the greatest towns in the central part of Louisiana. Here's some early 1800 shots of Main Street in Alexandria, founded in 1810 by Alexander Fulton and named after his daughter. It was a great lumber in Port Town. In fact is, here's some of those lumbermen right here on the uh, banks of the Red River. One of the first streetcars in the early 1900s to roll down the center of Alexandria. This is the Bentley Hotel. In fact is, it's sometimes called the Biltmore on the Bayou, built in 1908 by Joseph Bentley. Because he couldn't get a room in one of the other hotels, he decided to build the greatest hotel in all of Louisiana. 145 rooms, $750,000 it, it cost Joseph to build the Bentley even back then. Look at this beautiful bronze fountain. This is the skylight in the lobby of the Bentley. And this is right downtown Alexandria. Look at this beautiful mosaic floor and the period furniture that's found all over that wonderful hotel. And even the plaster work hand done just as it was many years ago in the plantation days of Louisiana. Gorgeous, beautiful white marble staircase. And I tell you, somebody asked uh, Joseph, how was he ever, what was he gonna do with this big old hotel? He said as he puffed on his cigar, I'm gonna fill her up every doggone night. The Kent House, the oldest structure in central Louisiana. Acadian architecture, but I don't know, it kind of patterns itself a little bit after West Indies architecture, also with that nice high roof, the two side wings, very, very important in early Louisiana architecture. This is some of the outbuildings, the old kitchen, and today the Kent House is used for parties and receptions and all those wonderful things. Now we're going to the town of LeCount. It's about, oh, I guess 20, 30 miles outside of Alexandria. The old high school is now the library and the museum in the town. This wonderful little house is now a bed and breakfast. And fact is, it's built by my guest who's gonna be on the show with us today. The Hardy House was built in 1888 and today has five bedrooms where people can spend the night and look at this beautiful Victorian uh, uh, freeze work. This little church, all lumber, sent from New York City in LeCount and uh, put back together right here in the center of the town. What a wonderful uh, area of Louisiana, central Louisiana. It's a whole different style of life from here in south Louisiana. But I tell you, wonderful food, wonderful people. And what am I going to cook today from that area of central Louisiana? Well, about, I guess it's uh, 20 miles or so outside of LeCount is a little town called Marksville in Avoyles Parish. And that town is famous for the Tunica Indians. So I decided to borrow a little bit from LeCount, Alexandria, Marksville, and do a dish that I enjoyed up there that was absolutely fabulous. And that dish was Tunica stuffed peppers. And I want to show you that today because I think it's something that you can do very quickly. And at the same time, it's a masterpiece on your table because it's so beautiful and colorful. So, and I mentioned my guest. I don't want to go too far before I tell you that Ann Johnson is the lady who owns that little hardy house you saw a minute ago. And Ann Johnson is the daughter of Lee Johnson, one of the most famous restaurateurs in the state of Louisiana. And she actually works at Lee's Lunchroom today in LeCount. 
And that uh, restaurant is famous not only for its food, but for its pies. And we're going to talk about Lee's pies that I'm sure all of you have probably eaten at some point before. Okay, tunica stuffed peppers. How do we begin? Well, look on my little chopping board here. I've got all of these great, great meats that we're going to put into the pepper as stuffings today. This is going to be a stuffed pepper, and I'm using three different types of meat. I'm using ground beef and ground pork, and there's a reason for that, which I'll tell you in just a second. But then I've taken a combination of the beef and pork, and I've seasoned it with some of that great Louisiana seasonings a little bit. Oh, basil, thyme, cracked black pepper, garlic, and let it almost marinate for a couple of days with the great seasonings because that really flavors the dish just a little bit more. I'm going to begin by putting just a little bit, oh, butter or any of that buttery blend or whatever into my black iron pot, and I'll kick up that uh, fire. And what I'm going to do is to saute this meat until it becomes nice and golden brown. You don't want to rush uh, the meat as it goes into the pot for browning. You want to put equal parts of the seasoned meat, and of course, you can use bulk sausage, which is found in any of the stores around uh, your own hometown. Bulk sausage can be purchased right out of the meat case, and it's pre-seasoned. That's what I like about it, so you don't have to do that seasoned meat yourself. I always put beef and pork into my stuffing or dressing mixtures, always, because the pork is nice and juicy, full of all those natural juices, whereas beef has a tendency to hold up better on the cooking. So I combine the two, and when they come together in the pot, you can't tell the difference, but boy, I tell you, does it make a difference in your stuffings. So I'm going to saute this around for just a second, and I'll continue to mash it into the pot and blend those three meats together until I get just the nice uh, color that I'm looking for. And you, you normally want the meat to cook for a minimum of about 30 minutes once you put it into the pot because you, not only do you want it golden brown, but you want to remove most of the oils from the meat as well. And once it's browned, I'll pour out all of the excess oil before I actually put my, the rest of my stuffing mix in. Once this is brown, I would add all of the flavors of Louisiana. Let's pretend for a minute that this is brown. I've got some already done. But I'll put a little onions a little celery, a little bell pepper, all down into the pot. Stir that around. Of course, I've got to add some of my great garlic. And I would, as I say, allow this to cook a minimum of 30 minutes with the seasonings in the pot, drain off all of the excess oil, and to keep it moist from that point, I would add a little beef bouillon, a little beef stock, a little chicken stock, or water, whatever it is that you have handy. I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to bring one that's already done. Look how this meat is really nice and brown, and look how juicy it is, really nice and juicy. Now I'll add my red bell pepper, not only for color, but also for taste. I'm going to add my yellow bell pepper. This is going to stuff bell pepper, so you want to have all of that nice color in there. And then I'm going to add whole kernel corn. I'm going to add the whole kernel corn because remember, this is from the Tunica Indians, and corn is such an important part of the diet in that part of the country as it is down here in South Louisiana. Now, to keep this moist, I would add just a touch of beef stock, as I say, or chicken stock, because I'm going to add the one ingredient that's going to hold it all together and that is cornbread. I have a nice little bowl here. I want you to take a look at this bowl, too. This bowl was hand-carved in Louisiana back in the late 1700s out of a solid little block of wood and even a nice little handle on it to hang on the kitchen sink or somewhere. I've got it full of cornbread, and I will add the cornbread down into the stuffing, and the cornbread will pick up all of the moisture, and this moisture will then flavor the cornbread and this stuffing into bell peppers is absolutely magnificent. I'll let this cook for just a second while I move all of this stuff off of my counter here so I can show you how to stuff it. Now I have this wonderful big platter, look at this platter of colored bell peppers. Now when I talk about stuffed tunica peppers, you know how I like color. Look how pretty all of these peppers are and I've cleaned them out and I'm gonna go right over to my skillet and take some of this nice uh, stuffing that's all done. Of course, you can season it with salt and pepper and 
thyme, basil, whatever you would like. Of course, I've got seasoned sausage in here, so I want to make sure that I don't over-season. I'm going to put the stuffing. Look how nice that is. Now, remember the cornbread is going to make this a really filling dish. Let me fill up one more pepper for you, because I've got some of these already cooked, too. I want to show you how we did them. Look at that, right on in. And all those pretty colors really make for a magnificent dish. And then I'll add a little tomato sauce to the bottom of the pan of peppers. Now, I'm using a tomato sauce that I made uh, today, but you can go into the store and buy a prepared tomato sauce, whatever you would like. I'm going to just pour it right over the peppers, and this would go into the oven with all the other nice little seasonings you want to add to it. So I'll move this out of the way for you so I can show you one of these that's already done. Let me move my pan out. And I've got some in the oven here. You're going to love this dish when you see it. This is probably as pretty a dish as you'll ever see me make. Look how nice that is. I'm going to close this oven door. Look how pretty this dish is with all of the different colored peppers that's sitting in the pan. In fact, let me move this on top of my cutting board so I can decorate it just a little bit more with some purple cabbage and a little carrots. And imagine sitting this right in the center of your table and let the guests kind of dip in and pull one of those tunica stuffed peppers out. Magnificent dish. Fact is, I can't wait to bite into that. I'll move that right out of the way. Okay, the next dish I'm going to do for you is, again, a fantastic soup dish that comes from central Louisiana. And wait till you hear the name of this. This is bacon lettuce and tomato sandwich soup. Yeah, that's right, I'm not crazy. Bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich soup. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a soup that I do in the restaurant all the time. It brings all the great flavors of what's better than a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Simple soup, too. It can be made in, I would say, 15 minutes. So if you're looking for a quick soup, this is the one to do. Of course, as we do everything else in Louisiana, we'll begin by putting a little bit of butter or oil. You can use bacon fat because it is bacon, lettuce, and tomato soup. And look at the ingredients. I've got all of these nice diced tomatoes. I've got the bacon, which has already been cut and, I mean, cooked and uh, crushed. I've got some andouille, the sausage of the Cajuns and Creoles, which adds the really wonderful smoke flavor to the dish. And then, of course, lettuce. I'm using romaine and I'm using red leaf lettuce. You can use any lettuce that you would like, but this is the one that I particularly like to use. Now I'm going to put a little bit of the bacon and the andouille down into the pot and saute this around quickly. And this is where the initial flavor is going to come into the soup. Now the bacon is already cooked, and so is the andouille, so you don't need to cook this for very long. Uh, once it's sauteed for just a second to put the bacon flavor into the soup, then we would begin to add our other ingredients. Of course, you know it, little onions. Imagine how quick this can be done. If you could smell this great bacon and andouille flavor coming out of this pot, I know you would want to crank one up on the, on the stove right now. A little onions, celery, a little red bell pepper, because this is a cream-based soup, so we definitely want to have some pretty color in here so that that cream doesn't look so white in the bowl. A little bell pepper, red and yellow, and of course, a touch of garlic. We have to have a little bit of garlic in all of this. And we'll continue to stir this around for just a second. Now, I'm going to make a velouté, which is a stock that's thickened with a butter roux. I already have the buttery flavored oil into the pot. I've got the flavor of the andouille and the, uh, and the bacon and the peppers and the garlic. Now I'll tighten it up, so to speak, with a little flour. Just a little touch of flour because I'm making a white roux right into the pot. A lot of people are afraid to do this because they think that this flour is going to just make little dumplings down into the pot. But remember, there's no water here, all oil down in the pot, so it's going to make a nice little wonderful roux. Okay, now I'll add chicken stock. You can add beef stock. You can add water, vegetable stock, whatever you would like. Of course, you can also eliminate the bacon and the andouille if you want to. There's a lot of really light meats like turkey. There's a lot of light meats like uh, uh, skin removed off a of chicken that would do really wonderful in here. And they also have some smoked light meats which would basically do the same thing. So if you don't like bacon or you don't like undue sausage for whatever reason, 
just uh, please substitute one of those other great, great uh, smoked meats or just plain white meats will be fine. This is a velouté you're looking at, a stock that's thickened with a little roux and look at all those pretty peppers and everything in there. Now I'm going to add my other ingredients. I'm going to add my lettuce, as I said, romaine and a little red leaf lettuce. And then I'm going to put my tomatoes right down into that. These tomatoes are already uh, seeded and diced, so they go right down into the pot. And then I'll continue to stir this around. Now you can add cream, or you don't have to add cream if you don't want to. And velouté is, it's not necessary to add cream, but I'm going to add just a little touch of cream because you know how I like all that good stuff. But you can use skim milk, you can use yogurt, you can use pasteurized skim milk. You don't have to add heavy whipping cream. Remember, don't sacrifice the dish just because there's something in it that you can't uh, eat. Just go ahead and make sure that you remember to substitute some of the things that you can eat into the dish. Now, all the ingredients are here. Onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic, the great flavors of Louisiana, red and yellow pepper, a little bit andouille, a little bit bacon, the lettuce and tomatoes. I'm going to allow this nice velouté to cook for a minute. I'm going to put a little touch of pepper sauce, a little bit basil, a little bit thyme, some cracked black pepper, and I'll leave the salt out because I want to make sure that the stock, which has a tremendous amount of salt in it, uh, does not over-season the soup. So I won't put any salt into this dish. Yet now I'm going to lower this to real, real low. Now what would I serve those uh, wonderful peppers with? What kind of vegetable? In fact, I'm going to move this right out of the way because I'm going to let this cook for a second. We'll taste it just a little bit later. Uh, what would I serve those wonderful peppers with? Well, I tell you, I would come up with a nice platterful of French fried okra. Take a look at this. Now this is okra from Louisiana, fantastic. We bread it in just a little yellow corn flour and milk and deep fried it for just a second. Now you can boil them, you can do anything with it. I love deep fried whole baby okra and that's what I'm going to serve with my peppers today. Now I told y'all just a little bit earlier that I had a great friend come in to visit with me, one of the best cooks in all of Louisiana, Ann Johnson. And as I said, Ann is one of the second generation. Hi. Hey, here I'm just Hi. talking about you. How you doing? I tried Great your to recipe. See. Did it come out? Oh, it's wonderful. Man. I almost didn't make it over here. <laughs> Look how beautiful that pie is. This is our Mason Dixon pecan pie. I gave you the recipe. I'm yeah. glad you tried it out. Hey, we'll we'll eat it. In fact, is I'm going to show all of these guys out here how to make it, and just a minute, we'll okay. show them how to make it. I'll put that right here. It's so great to see. You know, I was in your restaurant up in LeCount, Louisiana, just a while back, and we shot some wonderful scenes, and I want to take a look at that and share with okay. our viewers exactly what it is that Lee's is all about. So why don't you tell us what we're looking at here? Uh, this is a restaurant. We moved here in 1951 from Chaneyville. We started in Chaneyville in 1928. This is the dining area of the restaurant right here, and we seat 200 now. These are three generations of the restaurant. Uh, that's my son, Michael, trailer on the left. Uh, Daddy likes to visit with the customers. He's 95 years old now. And, and he founded the restaurant, right? Yeah, he founded the restaurant in 1928. My mother was 17 years old when she went to work for him. <laughs> and uh, we always keep fresh flowers in the ladies' room, fresh flowers all over the building. He uh, grow has greenhouses. He grows all the flowers. Wow, look at this pie. Is this typical of the famous Lee's pie? Yeah, that's our best seller, one of our best sellers, the pecan and the coconut. And uh, we have to make the boxes ahead because we average about uh, 200 a day. So we have to make the boxes ahead so we'll be ready to box. And all of these pies are made from scratch right there in the restaurant, yes. right? Yes, all hand rolled and uh, made by, we have four pastry cooks. Well, I can tell he's a PR guy. He's just yeah. sitting there talking to all of the customers. <laughs> I he enjoy, loves it. I really enjoy visiting with him too when I'm over in the restaurant. I, he's a, such a great guy, and he eats with me all the time, too, so it's I wonderful. I know he loves to go down there. It's wonderful, wonderful to have you uh, on the show with us today. You know, I know that having lived in LeCount for a short time myself, because when I was in college, I actually had a summer job uh, in LeCount. What a great little bitty uh, town in central Louisiana. And 
it has a very, very interesting history, especially the name of the town. How did, how did it get its name? Well, it's named after a racehorse. We had a, a famous racehorse called LeCount, so we want to market the town, LeCount, the one-horse town. <laughs> but when you were there, didn't you stay in a boxcar? I did. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> right. I was working a summer job on the railroad, and they had me living in a boxcar, if you can imagine that. But I still had a great, great time in LeCount. It was, uh, was it always, it wasn't always called LeCount, though. It had a... No, it used to be called Smith's Landing because uh, they could take uh, cotton and produce down the bow on barges to Alexander to the Red River and go on out to port. You you know your the pies at Lee's. I know I know the restaurant is called Lee's Lunchroom and it's mm -hmm. right there in the center of LeCount. But I know that that restaurant is famous for pies and baked hams and people drive from all over the world to get there. But what makes the pies different? Because they're all handmade and uh, we buy all fresh ingredients. We sell, uh, we buy probably more eggs from Gunner Egg Farms than anyone. And uh, er, all, most of the things are Louisiana products that we use in the pies and they're all homemade. Just it, like your mother or grandmother would make at home. Uh, so in other words, if I walked in there, you'd be happy to get me in there to recipes, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Three generations of recipes. It's, a, it's all top secret, Yeah, right? all top secret. Uh, well, look, I shared a pecan pie recipe with you. The least you could do is give <laughs> it a recipe for those eight different pies you make. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> How many pies do you all sell a year? Uh, last year we sold over 71,000. Jeez, 71,000. Yeah. And do, do you all ship them out? Can people... Uh, no, they're uh, all picked up right there. Is the that restaurant. right? Yeah. Gee, I tell you, well, okay. every time I'm in there... I know I must gain two, three pounds good. at one sitting. That's, yeah, good, right? I like this, uh, this soup. If you were not going to use that, uh, could you add a, some kind of meat or a Oh, sure, yeah. I, I, well, well, you know, I always make it just bacon, lettuce, and, and tomato. But every mm -hmm. now and then, when I run out of bacon or I run out of that sausage, I was just sharing with my friends here that I throw either smoked turkey or I've just put plain chicken, uh, just any, anything is great in that soup. Mm -hmm. However, I call it bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich soup because I'm gonna add some croutons to it right when I serve mm -hmm. it and that's where the bread is gonna come from. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to show all of these guys out here how we made this Mason Dixon pecan pie, I call it. Okay. It's got a little bit of the north and a little bit of the south. And as all pecan pies in Louisiana, we begin with a nice bowl of, I'll take a quarter pound of butter, and I always uh, uh, take it and I put it in a saute pan, and I cook it until it's slightly browned around the outside mm -hmm. edges. I think that that little <coughs> crystallized or caramelized coating of butter on the outside really flavors the pies differently. So if you have a great pecan pie recipe, try kind of almost burning that butter. Don't scorch it, almost, and then pour it into your bowl. So why don't you stir this okay. while I tell them what we're gonna put in here. We're gonna begin with a quarter pound of butter, three nice eggs, and just kind of stir that around really, really nice there. And I'm gonna put a little bit brown sugar down into the bowl and whip that all around. Is that basically the way you make a pecan pie? Oh yeah, no calories. Huh? No Wait, tell me a little bit more. How do you make a pecan pie? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, we used to have a waitress that would tell the uh, customers that we had a machine that took the calories out. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let me put the calories back in. I've got one cup of Louisiana cane syrup and honey that I'm putting down here. Not one of the white syrups, but Louisiana cane syrup with the brown sugar really gives it one of the great, great flavors that we're looking for in a southern pecan pie. Now. Oh, a little bit brandy, <laughs> a little bit bourbon, a little little bit of any kind of uh, liquor. Now, a lot of people will put brandy. I put bourbon in this pie because it really, really, somebody said pecan pies originated in Kentucky, so if it did, maybe that's where the bourbon came from. Okay, once all of that's uh, whipped together, of course, we can put a little bit vanilla, just a little touch of vanilla. We can put a little bit cinnamon, and you know, I'm always trying to collect some interesting little piece that I find along the highways, and I want you to look at this. This is a nutmeg grinder that's actually handmade out of tin, and there's a little door on the top that you, allows you to store your nutmeg, and then we can take it and slowly grind the fresh nutmeg. Now, you don't have to do this. I know you don't grind nutmeg for 71,000 nope. pies at least. Just try not to get any <laughs> knuckles in there. <laughs> yeah, so you just uh, grate the nutmeg real nicely, just like that, and then you can hit it, it and there's nothing like fresh ground oh, nutmeg. Nice. I mean, yeah. it really makes a big difference in the pie. So we'll go ahead and save my little thing, and you can hang it on the kitchen wall. This is, I guess, almost 200 years old. It's, Fantastic. Okay, now into that, 
the pecans. Now I'm going to add oh, a cup or so of pecans and I'll dump that right down into it. You can continue to stir that around. How many famous people stop in that restaurant? Everybody knows about it, not only in Louisiana, but all over the country. How many famous people stop uh, in that restaurant? How many other than you? Other than <laughs> me? <laughs> no, well, I'm not famous. Somebody really yes, you famous. Are, John. <laughs> I'm getting to go to your uh, restaurant in April in uh, London. Oh, it's well, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I, I just opened over there not too long ago. So, well, who, t t oh, tell me other than well, me who's uh, famous in there. Well, we have Al Hurt and Chris Owens, and uh, the, when the legislature lets out in, the, in their session, they all stop by and have pie and coffee and catch us up on the latest politics, and <laughs> that's quite interesting. <laughs> so we've had quite a few. We had all the candidates, you know, uh, the last election, right. we had them all in oh, there. Oh, yeah, there's always a bunch of politicians in Lee's. Now, I know I turned on the TV one night, and your dad was on Johnny Carson. I couldn't believe it. How did that happen? Yeah. One of our customers wrote an article. And uh, they, someone else sent it in, and uh, they called, started calling us up and wanted us on the show on Thanksgiving because of the pies. Right. Now, look, I'm going to go ahead. Well, he did a great job on that show. He's a good credit to Louisiana. Now, I've got a pie shell, that's, and I always cook my pies in a shell that's, uh, that's uncooked. A lot of people will cook it a little bit first. Why don't you go ahead and pour okay. that pie right down into that, and we'll get if all you, of that good filling out. If you were going to make the type pie that um, did not have a raw shell. Uh -huh. what, what do you do to keep that from puffing up? Well, the, you know, it depends on your pastry. If you're using a, a typical pie pastry, uh, like this one, this one will not puff up. Now, some, sometimes if there's a lot of butter uh, in a pastry shell, it'll puff up. Some people will put another pie sh uh, uh, pan mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the oven with the uh, shell to keep it from rising up. So if you're having problems with it, just pre-bake it for a minute with a little bitty uh, uh, pie uh, pan on top of it. Well, that's and my secret, I can tell you. We do ours <laughs> upside down oh, on the pan and punch it with a fork. Mm. I can't thank you enough for stopping and sharing some of those great uh, recipes with us, even though it was mine. Okay. <laughs> and thank you all so much, and I hope that you come back and visit as we continue to cook up more of those great Taste of Louisiana. Well, look, let's try this pie over here. Funding for this program was provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Bruce's yams and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Chef John Foltz has written a cookbook that allows you to explore the exciting world of Louisiana cuisine. The Evolution of Cajun and Creole Cuisine is a full-color, 352-page book containing food history and recipes for gumbo, jambalaya, mock choux, and other Cajun dishes. For your copy, send a check or money order for $24.95 to Louisiana Public Broadcasting at the address on your screen. To use your credit card, call toll-free 1-800-973-7246 or visit our website at lpb.org.